What's up, guys? Static in the Attic. I would like to thank Johnny Jones and Emil Zhengazov for your recent donations. Very kind of you. Um, Emil, it's looking to me like you might have accidentally donated that twice because it's showing one as cleared and then one is pending. So I think I think they understand that you didn't mean to do it twice, and so they're have one as pending, but you might want to check your account because I don't want you to get charged twice there. I kind of doubt that you meant to do that twice, and I think that PayPal understands that. That's why they've got one on hold and pending, so just check it out, please. And I'm not sure what all I've got on Crimea, like you were asking about, but I do have some Black Sea information, and I'll try to get that out in a future video. But yeah, guys, I've been incredibly busy and incredibly depressed, <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, um, it's a long story. I'm ready for spring, and I'm not going to bring you guys down about it. Alright, so I haven't done a whole lot of research lately, but I do have a pretty interesting find here. This has to do with dating and also something I've been trying to figure out for a long time is uh, sea level rise or fall with looking at the archaeology and the locations of the ruins and what you have. So what we've got here is a Roman bath found underneath Spain's Caño de Mecca beach. And it's really interesting that they say it's under the beach itself because obviously the beach is right on the ocean. I managed to find a 360 drone of this place. And you can see it's all pretty flat going in that direction. You swing around over here. There's one hillside that we could be talking about that it is cut into. But you can see that this is a big, long, flat peninsula to where one good wave coming through would pretty well bury everything that you've got there. And this is also facing open ocean that direction. One of the things you find here are these pools for preserving food, which is a saltwater evaporation pool, which means at one time these had to have been at sea level. They, they weren't bringing it up in buckets and filling these up. And I really wish I could have found the exact location of this on Google Earth, but you know you can see that this is probably over on that hillside. And I can show you one real fast that I can find, another Mediterranean city, that the port is nowhere near the ocean. And so when you look at all of this, you would definitely think that the water levels have dropped since then. But there's really no blanket right answer for this, because on other examples, I'll show you cities that are half submerged in water that makes it look like the water's risen. Now, an uh, interesting thing to know about Roman baths anytime you're looking at these and thinking about these is that these were basically ubiquitous with all of the ancient cities all around the Mediterranean, even up into Britain. They keep finding more and more of this stuff. And just looking at the archaeological ruins of the ancients, you get the picture that they liked to drink wine, they liked to hang out in the baths, they liked to go to plays in their theaters, and they like to see some people fighting in the rings, the gladiators. But you definitely get the impression that they're very clean people. Well, now fast forward to like the Baroque era of France, and all descriptions of that were just grotesque to our understanding modern days. They talk about people just relieving themselves like in the hallways of palaces. They would literally have toilets that hang hang off of the second floor and you would just let go all over the street down below. The Native Americans thought Europeans were disgusting. They never bathed, they stank, and the official narrative, as it were, doesn't really have any explanation for that. So, you know, it's obvious when you look at it through the lens of a reset. You had a very clean, ancient, sophisticated society, and then... Things went downhill for humanity for a very long time. There were all the witch trials for, you know, the poison wells because of contaminated drinking water and hygiene was generally bad. So you definitely see a decline in culture there. Now, they say that these Roman baths had walls that were 13 feet high and the structure would have been warmed by hot air diffused through the walls and the floor from an underground oven. Now, if you're not aware... 
all of the ancient Roman villas all had central heating. They built the houses on top of piers and they would make fires. I don't know how they'd blow it through the house. I guess if you've got a fireproof box down there, then, you know, the hot air will rise and take care of itself. But guys, they had central heating. They had plumbing pretty much ever since any archaeology finds have gone back, you know. But they say that this uh, this whole complex is two and a half acres, completely buried out here on this peninsula. And when you look at the saltwater evaporation pools that are definitely up quite a bit, you know, just from this photograph, you can tell these are at least 15, 20 feet above dry land. So the water's obviously lower than that. But one thing I wonder about is if the sea level has dropped, then how does that even happen? What is the mechanism behind that? The only thing I can think of is, you know, to get less water in the oceans. I can think of, you know, if you have an earthquake and a bunch of land falls into the ocean, then the water is going to rise. The only thing I can think of that would make it drop is if it all froze since then. And that actually makes a lot of sense if you think about it, because look, we know that Prior to the 14th century catastrophes, they, we've got pollen samples showing that they were farming in all of these northern latitudes. And then there was a major atmospheric shift with nonstop rain and drought and then literally 20 years of earthquakes. And just think about the weather changes that we have been experiencing lately and we're just at the very beginning of what they went through was a real rough one. Let's hope this one ain't that bad. But they straight up went into the little ice age. It's well known that temperatures drop. So did all of the ice in the Arctic regions just come about in the last 700 years? And they got all kinds of names for all the different cold spells in there. First you had the Wolf Minimum, then the Maunder Minimum, then the Dalton Minimum. The rivers would freeze over all through Europe and they would have what is called the Frost Fairs. So honestly, who knows what conditions were like in what they call the medieval warm period, but it could be totally possible that there was not a lot of ice up in the Arctic. Now let's look at the ancient port city of Ephesus. This is Ephesians from the Bible. This is well known as being a port city. So let's look at this on Google Earth. Here's that amphitheater and the rest of the town. And let's back it up and see how far that is from the Mediterranean. That's three and three quarters miles away from the water. This is even an artist's rendition of what the ancient city used to look like. That amphitheater that's almost four miles away from the ocean. Now, I'm not even kidding. I, I looked into this a long time ago. And the reason for this, they say, are goats. They say that goats ate up all of the vegetation, caused erosion, and that all of this filled in because of that. Now, just a reminder, a couple videos back on the 14th century catastrophes, I showed that they say that the island of Cyprus before the 14th century was a lush island, and that storms and a huge wave that dashed all the ships against the rocks, few survived. Uh, it got turned into a desert island after that. Once again, here you see the piers for the heated rooms. And, it, you know, if you know what you're looking at at these archaeological ruins, you see that this was a very sophisticated society for a very long time. They had indoor plumbing. They had hot water in the baths. I mean, it's pretty evident by looking at all of the huge aqueducts that are everywhere. But, you know, these are great engineering feats that were accomplished thousands of years ago and then society went from that to pooping in the streets. <laughs> so the first example was Spain and the water tanks were way above sea level. The next one was Turkey, once again above and now take a look at Tunisia on the left there and here's what you find there. These are known as garum tanks, and garum was a Roman condiment that was made out of like fermented fish juices or something. It sounded kind of disgusting, but evidently they really loved their garum. 
but this was a big production facility where they've got hundreds of tanks that are still on dry land and quite a bit of them are now underwater. And they say that this place was taken out by a wave in 365 AD. Now, I may be wrong on my dating. I don't know. I, I tend to think that there was one big reset 700 years ago in what they're calling the 14th century catastrophes. But they say there was another one in 500 AD. So if that's true, then we really have no record of anything for 700 years. So I do kind of tend to think that this was the fall of the ancients all at once 700 years ago. And I'll have to do a video just of all of the ruins around the Mediterranean because it really does look like it all got wiped out in one fell swoop. And I've got written records of literally 50 years of earthquakes happening back in the 14th century. But like I said, you kind of find conflicting evidence on whether sea level's gone up or it's gone down or it stayed the same. But when everything got thrown out of whack, we did fall into the little ice age. So was there ice in the northern southern regions prior to that? Or did that is this all just a new thing? Did it cool down real fast? And then it has been slowly melting for the last 700 years. Which, uh, by the way, we've had enormous growth in the last year. They, they won't talk about it because... They've got their whole, you know, there'll be no glaciers by 2014 was, I think it was supposed to be. And our kids weren't going to know what snow was, but um, that's all changing with a quickness. And if you guys have been keeping up with the weather changes, we're definitely going into the shift. And I hate to end it on a sour note, but guys, the little disruptions we've had in the supply chain so far, ain't nothing. I'm seriously... Uh, Next week or two, going to get out and start getting the yard prep for a garden and start trying my hand at that, just potatoes and whatnot, and just start learning. You know, I, I don't expect to be good at it right off the bat, and nobody else should either. But either you're going to, either you already know, or you're just going to keep ignoring it. So, historically speaking, we are going into a time of great change, and there's a lot of craziness going on right now that I, because they know so plan accordingly or ignore it at your own peril i would say but that's it out of me static out